Hoş geldiniz to Trabzon, beautiful people. We will be staying here for the next 48 hours and hopefully show you around Trabzon itself today and tomorrow visit the monastery of Sumela, which is close by to Trabzon. And thank God the weather has improved, so today it's really beautiful and really sunny and we cannot wait to show you this city. We had a pretty relaxing start to our day. We woke up in a hotel that we booked here in Trabzon. It's just a little bit outside of the center called Point Break Hotel. And we luckily have breakfast included with our stay. So we went down to the breakfast buffet, which was a very welcome thing to have in the morning because we have tea, coffee, and all the fantastic Turkish food that we could need to start our day off right. Also, they have a fantastic terrace in this hotel that gives you nice views over Trabzon Center. And there's also a really nice shopping mall close by called Forum Trabzon, which we ha went and had a look at yesterday. So it's the perfect hotel for us and it's right in our budget. Then we went, jumped on a dolmush, a local dolmush, that brings you right here to the center of Trabzon. And it only costs around seven Turkish lira or seven and a half Turkish lira per person to get you all the way here to the center. It's a quick five minute drive. And I cannot wait to check this beautiful city out. We had a quick five to 10 minute walk through the Maidan or the center of Trabzon. And we made our way to the very first stop of today, Zagnos Bridge, which has this incredible view over Fortress. Just over here, Fortress Walls of Trabzon. And there's also a tower as well, if you can see right here. And the views in general are very, very beautiful all around us. You can really see the how green the Black Sea region and how green Trabzon is. It's really just spectacularly beautiful. You have some more fortress wall up here in the distance. And another actually really interesting and beautiful looking bridge. There's also this gorgeous garden down below us. And you're probably going to notice as well that the general color scheme of a lot of the signs are burgundy and blue. And that has to do with Trabzon Spore or the Trabzon soccer team, football team. It is kind of the pride of Trabzon and we reached out to a local actually on Instagram and we asked what is the must do thing while you're in Trabzon and he said you have to go and see a Trabzon Spore football match. Now unfortunately we're only here for 48 hours and the next Trabzon Spore match is on the 10th of October so we're going to be long gone by that stage but nonetheless taking all of this beauty in this place so far is very very beautiful hello um, definitely well worth it so far we have a lot of places that we need to tick off here in Trabzon there's so many different things to see and explore and there's plenty of local cuisine as well that we have to try out the Black Sea region of course has a very different cuisine to the southern parts or the central parts of Turkey so it just makes it more and more interesting for us and that's something we're definitely going to be checking out in this video as well so we just met a lovely lady downstairs at the wall and I asked if we could go up to the tower uh, and she said yes so now we are on the tower she brought us up here uh, you have a lovely view over the Black Sea over there in the distance you can see the mosque and obviously the entire city wall all around here 
there's Luke. This is so cool. The view over Trabzon is just spectacular. And I don't think that we're even supposed to be allowed up here. This is pretty crazy. Yeah, we're like the only tourists up here. So I don't know if this is normal procedure or not, but we made it up here, so it's okay. There you have the flag of Trabzon, burgundy and blue, as Luke was saying. And from here, ah, Evet. The a monastery. Ah, I bet, I bet. I think you have a monastery up there. I don't know if you can see it about there. In the distance you have the monastery and down here you have the Zagnos Park um, and some of the fortified walls of the city as well. I didn't know that up there was another monastery. I thought... I thought Simela was the only one, but Simela Hayir. No, no, no Simela. <laughs> All right. So uh, what happened basically is that I walked through this door just to have a look at uh, the inside. I thought that was an inside, but it's actually just the wall and the tower. And the woman started talking to me in Turkish. And I said, sorry, Turkish bilmiyorum. I don't know Turkish, uh, German, Alman. And uh, she said, do you want to go up the tower? And I, I was like, yeah, let's do this. And uh, then we were invited to go to the top of the tower. Um, that woman was so, so cute. Absolutely amazing experience. And I think it's a little bit of a special experience as well, because there were no tourists or nobody around. So I assume it's not the normal protocol uh, of the wall or of the tower that you're allowed to go up. Now that woman that we just spoke to was very interesting. She had very little English and that's obviously expected but she said that she had like four children and they all left Turkey and went to places like Germany and Sweden etc. Um, very interesting to be able to speak to and communicate with locals even though it's on such a small basis like we were basically communicating mostly by body language but nonetheless she showed us that beautiful tower and she showed us the views out over Trabzon which is just really very beautiful place very green very lush and very sort of a lot of nature going on around here in the Black Sea region and the Black Sea coast and that is uh, to be expected because the climate is obviously very very different here Turkey is an absolutely massive country and it spans across many different climates um, but the view was fantastic and you were able to see a bunch of different sort of monuments all throughout Trabzon city including the girls monastery or the Kisler monastery which is kind of nestled up on a hill over here in the distance right now we've been walking around for quite a bit we're gonna go and try some of the local Trabzon cuisine I've heard that Trabzon pita is something that we have to try and there's also something called koymak I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, koymak. I think it's like a bit of kind of a cheese and potato type dish and it's typically eaten for breakfast. It's definitely not breakfast time right now. It's kind of the middle of the day, but we're going to go and see what we can get and try some of the local Trabzon cuisine. Actually, speaking of food, we were in touch, as I said before, with a local of Trabzon on Instagram and he actually recommended a place called Chardak Pida. So we're going to go and check that place out. I had a little bit of a look on Google reviews and it seems to be one of the most popular and widely recommended restaurants here in Trabzon. So we're definitely going to go and check that place out because I do have quite a bit of an appetite right now. And we're actually coming back up now towards the bridge that we were just on and we got to kind of make our way back towards the center to go to this restaurant. Let's go. All right guys, so we made our way to Chardak Pita and this place seems to be incredibly popular with the locals. Quite literally every table in this restaurant is packed full of Turkish locals here and the food looks absolutely delicious. There's actually a local gentleman sitting next to us right now digging into some of the food and it really looks spectacular. Both of us are absolutely starving and we cannot wait to give this food a try. Our food just came, but before I show you guys the food, look at this beautiful roof. Um, they have like fresh grapes basically dangling over our heads, um, which is so, so beautiful and gives this restaurant a beautiful atmosphere. And this is our food. So this is the Gui Mak um, Pide. 
and from what we read it is basically uh, corn flour and cheese type of pide obviously with large um, globs of butter and then we ordered this long pide that kind of looks like a filled baguette and there is mince in there with some herbs and maybe some onions and stuff like that um, it smells so good and if it wasn't burning hot i would dive in immediately but i kind of feel like we have to wait for at least another like two or three minutes i can barely talk because the smell makes my um, saliva accumulate in my mouth it's crazy it smells so good naomi is about to have her very first bite of the koimak pita very hot it's so good. It's a very interesting taste. It's kind of, it sits in the middle between sweet and savory. So I'm not sure if I should add sugar to it or salt. <laughs> but um, it's super, super interesting. Obviously, the flavor of the butter is kind of the main um, flavor that you will taste when you try this dish. Mm. And the texture is beautiful. It's just. It's really like soul food, like comfort food. Um, it's really warm. Obviously, the, the bread is very crispy. I don't know if you can hear that. And then the inside is kind of this gooey, gooey, buttery goodness. It's beautiful. Kind of looks like it's basically, what it, from what it seems, it looks like mashed potato and butter. But I think it's actually cornmeal, cornmeal with it's butter. Cornflour. Cornflour, yeah. Wow, it looks absolutely amazing. I can't wait to try it as well. This one seems interesting too. I'm gonna actually give you guys a quick little first bite of this one. This it seems to be basically a long pita bread that is filled with minced meat. A whole bunch of different herbs and spices seem to be blended in there too. Let's give it a first bite. Oh my god. Wow. As Naomi just said, that is the ultimate soul food right there. I think we definitely did the right thing by coming here. This is absolutely delicious. And I'm definitely gonna be finishing this off. The texture of the bread is crispy. It's very warm. And it's really just sort of heartwarming, soul warming, soul food. It's the only way I can describe it right now. I'm actually almost, almost speechless by the great taste of this. And I can't wait to try the Koi Mac one as well. That meal was fantastic. Like, so good. Um, the pita, this long pita thing that we had with the minced meat was super juicy, super flavorful. Uh, never had anything like that. And to be honest, the guimac or kuimac, I'm not sure how it's pronounced because in the restaurants it was uh, spelled with a G and online it's spelled with a K. So I'm not too sure if it's guimac or kuimac. Anyway, that was nothing like I ever tasted before in my entire life. It was so, so tasty and so warming. Uh, I would 100% eat that again, but I'm also sure that we probably ate about half a kilogram of butter at this stage. <laughs> Yeah, the flavor was incredibly unique and we just want to say thank you very very much to our good friends subscribers every single one of you guys who watch us um, if you ever do send us over any recommendations it's highly appreciated because a lot of a lot of times we are basically just showing up into a city or a town in a country and we genuinely have no idea what we're doing or what we're trying so thank you very much to our good friend over on instagram uh, for recommending that food to us and for recommending the restaurant as well because it genuinely was out of this world like something like i've never actually tasted before and the price performance the meal the how full we are just how content we are um, 10 out of 10 the experience was fantastic we would have never found that restaurant by ourselves to be honest if it wasn't for you guys we would have probably went to another duna or another uh, pizza place or something like that and um, we would have never found this dish 100 percent so thank you guys so much
that's something that we really um, are seeing here in the north of Turkey and something that we've seen all throughout Turkey since we've first arrived here. The Turkish people are absolutely fantastic, amazing, so warm, so friendly and they are really open to inviting you and recommending you different places to go and different foods to try so we couldn't be happier right now but now we're gonna go and explore a little bit more of Trabzon this video obviously 48 hours in Trabzon we have plenty of time ahead so let's go and check out more of this amazing city we were trying to find our way to the water which we managed um, here in Trabzon if you want to go to the water it kind of seems like you have to cross one of those like fast motorway type of streets so we just found this beautiful chai garden here uh, it's called chai garnita bacesi and uh, you're directly sitting on one of these like really small black sand beaches basically with beautiful cliffs i believe up there is a military station so maybe not film it i'm just gonna film over here <laughs> so you have a beautiful view onto the black sea here and the chai seems to be very affordable as well, which is why we picked the place. It's very beautiful, very peaceful, and um, it just kind of seems like the perfect place to just enjoy your afternoon and kind of take it easy, look onto the sea, or maybe read a book or something like that, which is why I love this place so much. All right, guys, so as you can probably tell, it is the next day, and we have been driving on this white bus that you can see behind me right now. We drove through a village or town called Machka on the way to the amazing Sumela Monastery. And right now we're at a bit of a pit stop at this amazing, very beautiful natural waterfall here in the middle of nowhere. Just have a look at how amazing this place is. Absolutely beautiful. And then off here in the distance you have incredible views of mountains, cliffs, forests, everything. This is so amazing. It's really loud here. I didn't expect this to be so loud because it looks quite small, but it's actually a lot larger than you think. Um, and uh, just standing here you get a little bit wet, so it's actually nice because it's a very sunny, very warm day. We have been sitting on a bus for one hour, sweating a lot. <laughs> so I'm just like standing here enjoying the, the fresh breeze. It's so nice. <laughs> If you guys are looking to visit Sumela from Trabzon, you basically just have to go to a place called Fatih Park and then ask for the bus to Sumela. That's basically all you have to do. Uh, but we, we will, I'll leave it down in the description of this video, just exactly what we did in order to get to Sumela Monastery. And our next stop after here will be the monastery itself. We just got off the bus there and it seems like it's very well organized by now. Um, we kind of thought that we would have to take a bus to Machka, which is a different village, and then another bus from there to go to Sumela. But it seems like they organized a round trip from Trabzon, where you just pay one price basically for the way there, the entrance to Samela Monastery, and then all the way back as well. So the guy just said that we have two hours here and he's gonna wait for us, um, which is just perfect. So we are now on the last stretch of the walk towards Sumela. Uh, you have to walk quite a bit of stairs, not complaining, just out of breath. Um, but you have such a nice view all around. You're obviously pretty high up in the mountains, um, so the air is pretty fresh and cold, so it's nice. And uh, Sumela, it is believed Su Mela means dark mountain, because they built this monastery apparently into a very, very large cave on the side of the mountain where you have like direct cliffs going down. Um, I've read beforehand that this monastery was closed for three years up until 2019 because uh, of where it is built. So it is built so much on the cliff that there were rocks falling permanently onto the monastery. So they closed it down for a while because it was too dangerous to visit it.
Okay, welcome to the final steps just before Sumela Monastery. Have a look at that amazing view out over the mountains and forests of the Black Sea region of Turkey. Speechless, to be honest, also very much out of breath. But um, you're dropped off around 350 meters from the monastery itself. And now we are approaching, I think it seems to be a ticket office. Um, we'll let you guys know just how much the ticket entr for entrance was. I can't wait to check this place out. So the tickets for entrance is 125 lira each per person. Um, so we're just basically currently at a pit stop. We needed some water. It is actually really warm today, surprisingly enough. The last few days have been pretty mild temperature wise, but today all of a sudden it just feels really warm. It's almost like we went straight back to summertime. But um, we're just sitting here enjoying some water, taking in the spectacular views as I showed you guys already. Over here you have uh, the staircase which leads you up to the actual monastery and stunning view out here as I showed you guys there out onto the forest and mountains. We're going to be heading up this staircase now in two or three minutes and yeah, check this place out. It's already mind-blowingly beautiful and luckily enough you have an option here to grab some tea, some chai or whatever you might need if you do need to hydrate before you go and explore the monastery. We also got this handy little brochure as well that gives you a bit of a breakdown about Sumela Monastery and it's called the Hidden Sanctuary in Clouds which very interesting description and definitely you can see that when you even just look over here in the distance but it's a handy little brochure that basically gives you a whole bunch of extra information I'm not going to read through it because that would be pretty boring but nonetheless handy little addition here we just entered the monastery itself and this is what it looks like when you first arrive uh, I don't know what this gentleman is doing they have some sort of a pulley system here anyway now you can really see all of the nets that were attached to the cliffside over the last few years um, they even have some pictures here pardon <laughs> they even have some pictures here from the last few years where they have been attaching um, the nets basically as you can see um, I think it was a very, very important addition to this monastery um, to make it safe and accessible for people to visit up here. But yeah, from here we have this stunning view and we cannot wait to walk around a little bit and explore. You can already see here on the left um, there are a lot of kind of murals and paintings there in the distance, um, which I cannot wait to see. You can enter a lot of the houses here. Um, for example, we have just been in a room called the student's room and now we're going to go into the mutfak, into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> very dark, obviously. It's very dark, yeah, but it's so nice. What I find very, very astonishing, you know, when you usually enter these very, very old buildings, you get a certain feeling about it. And um, I feel like everything here is very peaceful, very like, I don't know, I don't want to sound like a guru, but like white energy or whatever you would tranquil. call it. <laughs> it's tranquil. Yeah, that's the word. Anyway, you have the uh, fireplace here, I believe, for cooking some meals. And it's... Apparently it was used as a bakery as well. This looks like some very, very old oven. Um, you probably can't really see that well with this camera, but yeah, used as a bakery. Very, very interesting and incredibly beautiful location as well. I can't really get over just how amazing it is. You have to be careful with your head though. Yeah, people were a lot smaller back, back then. 
or the same height, but they wanted to bow down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, this place is truly astonishingly beautiful. And all of this on the side of quite literally a cliff. And you have over here, you can actually see a lot of the um, still remaining wall design, which is just amazing. And it's kind of almost like um, the whole entire monastery is like a maze of different rooms and structures. Uh, we're literally just wandering around trying to see what we can discover. I'm getting wet here. I'm starting to feel a little bit of rain, no? No, it's from the, oh. the cliff. There's somebody actually working on the netting up there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's a guy, there's a guy literally right up there above us. Anyway, it's um, interesting. Well, he's not moving. It might be like a kind of like a thing to show that there was a guy up there. Hopefully he's all right. <laughs> um, wow, this place is so nice. Just have a look at the architecture all around. You can see this part obviously was more of the older part and then this is very clearly has been renewed and it looks sort of entirely newly done it's very very beautiful everywhere you look and i cannot wait to explore a little bit more in here making our way now towards what seems to be like a chapel tower there is a stairs that we're following up and i'm sure it gives you another beautiful perspective or a beautiful view of this gorgeous monastery i just can't get over the artwork the frescoes that are on the walls here so beautifully preserved something that naomi mentioned to me though and i was like oh i didn't even realize that was that all of the faces or a lot of the faces of the figures in the fresco paintings are actually scratched off and i noticed that on could be maybe 10 to 12 different figures they purposefully like literally scratched the, just the face off so I find that very interesting to think about um, and i wonder why that was if anybody into history knows exactly why that is please let us down let us know down in the comment section below we are up here now on this beautiful chapel tower amazing views of course and you get a little bit of a different uh, perspective of the monastery itself as well they also have this very cool sort of manual carriage that keeps bringing stuff up and back for the construction or the restoration of the monastery um, it's really cool really beautiful place um, it kind of looks like that some of the old structures over there, as you can see the columns, um, are still standing, but kind of the house around was probably taken down a, a good bit by the rocks that were falling. So it seems like parts of it, so like the white parts of the house are being replaced and the old stone, like you can see here on the right, or maybe on the left down here, um, is still the original stone and they're currently trying to basically put it back in place I assume because of the um, destruction that happened from the cliffs you can see we're like permanently standing directly uh, under the cliff so uh, I assume that a lot of the rocks were falling down and causing a lot of damage here what I'm finding really interesting is that it kind of seems like this monastery was built a little bit like a maze or a labyrinth um, no matter where you go there's always like two or three ways um, leading in different directions so you can go this way you can go that way you can go this way here up to where I'm standing right now or to the right down there um, so there are probably never-ending uh, amounts of possibilities of how you can walk around this monastery and um, everywhere you go there are like smaller chapels or the rooms of the priests uh, student rooms and so on so it's uh, super super interesting to just kind of walk around and uh, experience this area on your own terms this here is another chapel from what it looks like Let's just walk in here. Sorry, I have to bow down every time <laughs> I'm trying to go into something here, into some rooms. But as you can see, a lot of the 
structures and the decorations, the frescoes are still there. Um, it just kind of seems like little parts here and there of it were replaced in order to make it safe for people to visit. But no matter where you go, you have this amazing view onto that mountain. And uh, I believe if I would have been here as a student, which was probably not possible because I assume it was um, probably for male students only, I assume, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but if I would have been here as a student, I would never be able to concentrate because you have this permanent, beautiful view and this peaceful setting, uh, which is just mind-blowingly beautiful. All right, so after that quick, brief, but very beautiful trip, making our way back, just look at this. I think this view alone makes, makes it worth the trip, for sure. It's really beautiful. Just after this brief visit here to the amazing monastery of Sumela, um, it's really funny. Both of our legs feel like absolute jelly right now. Um, it's only like 300, 400 meters from where the bus dropped us off to the monastery and back. So it's like a little under one kilometer that we're actually walking. But because it's like up and down, up and down, and when you're in the monastery as well, you're climbing up through the rooms and exploring the place, my legs are literally numb. It's so funny, I'm literally walking like, I don't know. Look, it, Naomi just said that it felt like she just trained legs or something for like an hour, like <laughs> intense session of leg training or something. But uh, yeah, we're gonna make our way back towards the bus now. One important thing to say maybe is um, that this area is not wheelchair accessible. So no matter where you go, it's just stairs. Um, yep. So in, in case you're sitting in a wheelchair or you might have some sort of a walking disability or something like that, I don't think that this would be a good place for you, yeah, um, for unfortunately, sure. because it's so beautiful. But um, yeah, maybe in the future they will change it to make it maybe a little bit more accessible for, um, for wheelchair as well. Yep, it is a lot of stairs. Even able-bodied people such as ourselves are actually struggling getting around here. Um, and obviously you do have the warnings everywhere of falling rocks, etc. But nonetheless, here's a sign. Rock pieces can fall. Um, but nonetheless, there's nets pretty much everywhere along the track and around the monastery as well. Um, but it was a beautiful experience, 10 out of 10. Would recommend you guys to come and check this place out. Check Trabzon out as well. Um, yesterday was a equally beautiful experience. The city of Trabzon is very special. The food that we had was absolutely amazing. Oh my God. I so think good. I'm gonna go for another one of these. What yeah. were they called? Koi, 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 koi mac, koi mac. Pide, koi Trabzon pita, all of the pita. I think we're gonna go back to the same place, the same restaurant, because after all that walking, we're definitely hungry. Um, but yeah, for now, we're gonna make our way back towards the bus and drive back towards the center of Trabzon. We spent a considerable, well, not a considerable, if you think about Europe, Europe and how expensive our home countries are. We certainly didn't spend that much money today, but as always, we will leave what we spent in today's video in the description for you guys as well. All right, guys, so unfortunately, that is it for our time in Trabzon for now. My name is Luke. My name is Naomi. We are the two Mad Explorers. And this is your reminder to keep exploring. And we'll see you guys in the next adventure. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.